Welcome to another episode of Vital Doc Talk. And today we have Dr. Jason Marr on the show. And this is quite a treat because he's actually a leader in his field when it comes to naturopathic physicians. And um, Dr. Jason, I just wanted to uh, say welcome. Thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Vlad. It's, uh, it's a pleasure. All right, awesome. So why don't we uh, just dive on right in with uh, your background? Why don't you give us kind of a quick you know, bio of, of how you got started in the field, what motivated you, did you always want to do it? And then, uh, you know, kind of what your vision is for the future. Sure. Yeah. Um, oh man, it's a, it's a loaded question. Well, I guess <laughs> I'm a naturopathic doctor. Uh, I've been practicing in uh, downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, up here in Canada uh, for about 14 years now. Um, and I think I always knew when I was younger that, you know, I, I really wanted to help people and get involved probably in, in medicine or healthcare. You know, I think I, I tossed around ideas like uh, optometry and physiotherapy and stuff like that a lot. Um, and, uh, and certainly conventional medical school, but naturopathic medicine just kind of seemed like the right fit because it was sort of, when I looked at how naturopathic doctors could practice and the freedom to do that, it kind of let me blend all of my entrepreneurial uh, attitudes and, and experiences uh, into a medical practice and still help people in that way too. So um, it really fits sort of the, the full gamut of all my experiences that it sort of, you know, accumulated to that point in my life. But, um, but today uh, as a naturopathic doctor, I, I really think of myself in a lot of ways as more of a performance and productivity coach. Um, I certainly work as a consultant and, uh, and coach people directly um, as well as organizations. Um, but uh, I'm also the chair of professional development at the Boucher Institute of Natural, uh, Naturopathic Medicine. Uh, so that's our major uh, naturopathic college up here in Canada on the West Coast. Um, and so it's really about teaching other healthcare practitioners and specifically naturopathic doctors to be good business people and to be good entrepreneurs and understand um, you know, what options we have as far as building our, our careers and our practices. So um, that's sort of uh, you know, how I got to, to where I'm at uh, at this point. Yeah, and I remember we spoke, and uh, one thing that you said that really stood out to me is you said, you know, saying you're a naturopath is just kind of like saying you're a doctor today, right? Um, and I think this even applies because we have a diverse audience. I love obviously working with naturopathic doctors, it's not a secret. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, even if you're a plastic surgeon, I feel like that's still too vague, right? So what are your, some of your tips for, uh, you know, people out there niching down or finding what they got to do? Because I remember you, t you were telling me for the marketing, that's kind of one of the things that uh, they need to, to figure out. Yeah, I think it's a really important thing these days. And, you know, I get, I hear a lot from my students and from other naturopathic doctors, especially that, you know, oh, this area or this town or this city is saturated. Um, and I think that, you know, you can certainly look at it that way if you are thinking about yourself as a more general practitioner. But I think the more that you recognize, you know, what your values are and you're starting to realize, like, who are the people that you can best deliver the best of yourself to? So I always talk about delivering the best of yourself to the people who are most interested in, and, and who need what you need uh, or what you, what you have to offer. Um, and I think that that's something that we're not paying enough attention to. Um, in naturopathic medicine in particular, we really pride ourselves on being uh, a very generalized profession and being able to do a lot of different things. And that's part of the magic of being an integrative and functional and holistic practitioner is that you've got all these different tools and you can help a lot of different people, but you're always going to gravitate to a certain area a little bit better. You're always going to develop relationships more easily with certain types of people. And I think if we start to leverage, if we start to recognize and leverage those facts in terms of our observations of how we are practicing best with certain people and where we are the most passionate, that's really where we start to you know, move our careers forward and really become more well known for something in particular. But if you're out there in practice and you're struggling to make ends meet from a financial standpoint and you're practicing in a very generalized way, you're not offering your clients or your patients, whatever you want to call them, you're not offering them a reason to come and see you. Why would I pay you the same amount of money or spend my time and effort to see you a jack of all trades when there's this person down the street or online who is an expert in that thing that I have? So I think there's a lot of concern over, you know, niching, niching down or niching down um, and getting so specific because people think that you're pigeonholing yourself. But the truth is, you know, you can be spray bombing everybody on the internet in the entire world and saying not a lot that's very relevant to everybody out there or you and you can convert it like 
1%, or you can focus in on, you know, those few people who specifically need you and who would get, get along best with you um, and convert at like 80%. And I think that that's a very different mindset in terms of how we go about promoting ourselves and marketing ourselves. So that's probably from a general standpoint, the biggest thing that, you know, you know, I wanted to come on, on your podcast and really say um, is that, you know, practicing as a general practitioner is fine and it works great in a small community where you are the one option. But if you're looking to scale and if you're looking at becoming well known for something, you've got to have a more specific focus. And that doesn't necessarily have to be super specific, but give people a reason to come and see you and not choose someone else who's, who's better at that thing than you, at least is perceived to be better. So how is doctors should, should they, you know, the audience members think about what they you know, find what to be the best at, you know, cause, cause I can definitely, especially when I talk to the doctors that are just coming out of school for a couple of years, maybe whatever. Right. And they see themselves as, Oh, I'm a dentist, you know, yeah. or I'm just do this. Right. What is it, what they're passionate about is what makes the most money. Is it all the above? What's that process or system they should use? Yeah, I think, it, I mean, you, you gave some examples there, and I think any of those would be very appropriate. I don't think that there's a magic recipe for that. But what I would offer is, you know, while you're going through your schooling, while you're going through your first couple of months to years of practice, really pay attention to the people who are most receptive to the things that you're saying, and mm -hmm. really pay attention to the things that you get energized in talking about. And where those two things intersect or overlap, it's kind of like a Venn diagram, right? Here on yep. one side, one circle are all the things I love talking about. In the other circle, here are all the people who love hearing about or that I get along with and that I can, you know, even, I don't know if influence is the right word, but all the people that are really receptive to everything that I say, where are the people, like, who are the people that, where those areas overlap? That's who you should be focusing on um, and speaking to every single time you produce a video, a blog post, a newspaper article, a newsletter, whatever it is, um, you're consistently speaking to the same target audience. Yeah, I like that. You know, having that one avatar, and um, you know, that's I think that is that is really key. And, and so, if let's say a doctor's coming out of school, right, and they have this niche that they really they enjoy, they practiced, etc., right, and they have their website up, they got those basic in place. What would be what's your favorite like marketing channel or marketing source that maybe you recommend to them to to really focus on to to grow? Yeah, well, I mean, Vlad, I knew you were going to ask that question. And I think, you know, generally speaking, I'm a huge proponent for healthcare practitioners to get back to mar uh, to get back to networking, um, forming relationships, um, and really networking outside of our own industry. Um, in a fairly recent study for naturopathic doctors, specifically in North America, um, there was a stat that uh, the number one referral source for new patients or for clients was from other healthcare practitioners. Um, wow. And so I think that that's something that we are underrating and not spending enough time doing is connecting with other healthcare practitioners and then getting outside of our industry and creating other opportunities for ourselves um, to get involved with you know, other industries and different companies and different people. But from a more online business standpoint and probably a little bit more relevant for your listeners, Vlad, I think um, something I'm jumping into right now, which I think is huge, are quizzes. Um, so really being able to you know, learn about your clientele or even the kinds of people who are even remotely interested in what you do um, by putting quizzes out there or questionnaires where you can not only um, segment those pop that population based on their results and even offer different email campaigns to different results for those quizzes, but it also gives you the opportunity to learn a little bit about the kinds of people who are uh, who you are getting in front of um, so that you can better serve them and ask them more questions about you know, what they would like to see and hear about and learn about. Um, so yeah, from a online marketing, especially uh, quizzes would definitely be the thing that I'm most interested in right now. Interesting. And how are you distributing those quizzes that you just put on the homepage? Is it through email or? Yeah, I think you got a couple of options. I mean, if you're someone, I mean, I, I know a little bit about what you do, Vlad, so I'm, you know, I'm trying to tailor this to more likely some of the, your listeners. So for those people who have an email list already, um, you could just put that into your email newsletter. Um, and just ask for their help and just ask for their opinion um, and, to, and to throw out that quiz. You're seeing a lot more of these, um, you know, software service uh, type programs that allow you to, uh, to generate quizzes online um, and basically turn a landing page into a quiz page. Uh, and you can link that to uh, your social media accounts like Facebook and stuff like that too. You've all seen those things like 
find out what kind of cartoon character you are. It's the exact same platforms that can yep. can serve you um, in the same way. So um, yeah, I think it depends on where you're at. If you've got an email list, that's you should absolutely be leveraging that. Um, if you're a little bit newer to that and you're trying to collect and, and build an email list, quizzes could be a great way to do that as well um, and to build your email campaigns. I like, I like that. I mean, I, I'm, we've never talked about quizzes on the show before. You know, we've talked about TikTok on yeah. the show. We've talked about, uh, you know, influ Instagram influencer campaigns. So this is good. I was like new territory. Now, yeah. what should the quiz be about? You know, let's pretend I'm a dermatologist, right? And uh, I specialize in whatever teenage, you know, Dermot, I don't even know. I, I'm, I'm completely, this is how bad I am at this. But uh, basically, you know, let's, let's say you have your niche, right? How would you put, what would the quiz be about? Well, let me give you an example that I'm working on right now. Um, I mean, I'm not afraid to, to share that. So Great. It's fine for me. Um, so a big part of my platform is around resilience. It's the name of my sort of executive medicine program as well. And the platform that I'm really uh, leaning into launching and, and really rebranding around right now. Um, and so there are some existing questionnaires around uh, and quizzes around resilience already, uh, many of which are validated and, and for which there are lots of research. Uh, mm -hmm. What I'm trying to do right now is acquire the rights to use a short version of a particularly validated resilience quiz um, and turn that into a quiz online. The idea being um, you can segment the population. So if you score between I don't know, zero and 50 on this resilience score, they're gonna get one landing page. Um, if they score between 50 and 75, another landing page and, uh, you know, 75 or higher, they've got really high resilience. And so what's important about that is it helps with your conversions because then you know what conversation to have with those people. So each of those different landing pages could be segmented to a different video that you've recorded that is a bit more specific to that population. So, you know, under 50 on that score, hey, it seems like you've been struggling, you've struggled with resilience, you're experiencing this kind of thing. Um, here's how I might be able to help you, or here's how a naturopathic doctor might be able to help you. We can't be treating through that, so it's very important for, especially for those of us who are regulated healthcare practitioners, we have to be very careful about not treating through that, but to be able to segment and, and sort of like quasi-diagnose people based on uh, something like that, to give them an idea of what you have to offer. It's almost like uh, an automated meet and greet um, or discovery call, um, depending on how you, you frame that. Um, so again, that you know, middle score, hey, you're doing really well, but there are times where you struggle with this kind of thing. These are the kinds of lifestyle tips that I often give to these people. If you want more, here's my program. And then of course, for the people who are already doing very well with the resilience, we might say, hey, you're doing awesome. Let's take you to the next level. This is how we level up and this is the program for you for this reason. Um, so that's just one thing that I'm sort of digging into a little bit uh, more right now and, and what I'm trying to launch um, with quizzes uh, at the current time. That's awesome. And then have you already gotten results and replies or is that in the process right now? Yeah, I haven't launched uh, my quiz because uh, I have to get permission from, I, want, I really want to use this particular scale. I have permission to use it in practice, but I haven't had permission to make it more public and I want to make sure that uh, I'm not going to get sued for using someone's scale that... Uh, uh, they've produced so I'm just uh, negotiating with the uh, uh, with the developers of that uh, that research I mean you could make up your own quiz though right I just happen to have access to this particular uh, survey that is validated and there's a load of research for so um, if I'm able to use that uh, that that quiz or that questionnaire then I'd like to do that I, love, I mean, I love the quiz concept as well guys because um, you know I was even before the podcast believe it or not we were doing interviews with doctors through guest blog posts. And one of the psychiatrists who just retired, she told me her number one source for conversions on her own website was this quiz for like, you know, like, you know, am I healthy enough or learn? Do I need, you know, what, what kind of psychiatry services or whatever. Right. So she said like, that was the best thing for her. So this is, you know, uh, just validation to that. It gives people the opportunity to feel like it is more individualized right from the get go right? It's not just a one size fits all. Here's my program. Everyone should do it. It's this is tailored to me. And this message or video at the very least is for me. That person really understands me that, you know, there's a sense of empathy um, that's built into that. Um, I know Vlad, how much you've spoken about on your podcast, like the idea of like story branding essentially um, and, uh, and form formulating a story around your client and positioning them as the hero or the protagonist in that story. 
but a big part of that is positioning yourself as the expert guide, right? So your patients, Luke Skywalker, your Yoda, what do you have to offer them that's going to be able to help them overcome their obstacles? Um, and part of engaging them is really, you know, understanding what, what are the pain points that I can empathize with so that they feel like, yeah, you really understand me. I want to work with you because of that, um, under that level of understanding. Right. I like, I, I really like that. Um, you know, that's, I never thought about myself as Yoda, but that is a, that is a great way, great way to do it guys. Um, so sw switching gears a little bit, right? You've seen coronavirus obviously cause a lot of different havoc in the field. Um, what would be your advice to doctors out there who's obviously been impacted by it and they see their, I remember I, I uh, one of the guys on one of our groups here, he said, I have four or six practices, four of them got shut down, right? Yeah. What's, what are your words of wisdom there? Should they be, how, how should they be spending their time? Um, spending your time, you should be spending your time uh, looking for opportunities. And I mean, that seems like such a generalized thing, but I think everyone just assumes, oh, the pivot here is to go online. The pivot here is to create an online course. It's to do more social media. It's to throw more money into Google ads. And, and all of those things are really relevant. Um, but everybody else is also doing that too, right? Um, so I think it's, again, really paying attention and leaning into the things that feel most natural for you. Um, and if that's creating an online course and you've got the time and effort and energy to do that, uh, you should 100% be doing that. Um, but it's, it's more about paying attention to what's working for you um, and, and what's not working for you. Some people who have, uh, during this period of time as, practi as healthcare practitioners, we've tried pivoting to telemedicine and virtual office visits. And honestly, that's not for everybody. And some people are realizing that. And that's okay. I think that it, it creates other concerns about the uh, potential of something like this happening again, you know, as soon as this fall, perhaps, you know, we're talking about uh, second wave uh, effects likely. Yeah, uh, there's over in yeah. October and November. So you've got to put some plans into place. Um, but if you're noticing and recognizing, oh, this is not for me, this is not how I want to practice, that's important too. And don't let yourself, um, you know, get pushed into making those decisions just because everybody else is doing it or, or because everybody else says you should. Um, so I think it's just paying attention to, to what's working for you um, and formulating a plan around that. And that's a big part of how I approach things as, as a coach in general um, is, you know, understanding and observing here, there are opportunities that other people are suggesting or that other people are trying. There are philosophies out there to try let's see how it fits on you. Um, but don't get, don't get married to it too quickly. Right. I, I like, I really like that. You know, it also goes back to that Venn diagram example that you were talking about in terms of your niche, right? You got your, mm -hmm. what people are influenced by, or I guess I would say what, what people you feel like most enjoy doing business with you on and then what you enjoy. And then, you know, the, the one in the middle. So um, if, if I was a doctor listing, right. And if you, let's say you had you know, all their ears, what would be the next step for them to, um, I guess, implement what you've been saying here today? Would it be to start with a quiz, you know, and go, go down that route? Would it be just refocus on what, you know, are they really passionate about what they're doing? Are they niched down correctly? What do you think their uh, next kind of tangible step should be? Yeah, well, I mean, I kind of mentioned two things. So, I mean, as far as the networking thing goes, which I, you know, I touched on, but I wasn't, you know, really in depth with, but I do think that that's one of a huge issue for mm -hmm. health practitioner. Uh, we just don't do that. And, and honestly, guys, like every other industry still does that. I, I, I met Vlad in exactly that way. It was just a random connection um, that happened to work out. And we were like, hey, let's do a podcast together. Mm -hmm. But you don't get those opportunities if you don't reach out for them and you don't take advantage of the opportunities that are presenting themselves in the first place. So an um, actionable item here would be one hour minimum per week of networking with people outside your industry, people who are not healthcare practitioners, hang out with them, have coffee, have coffee on Zoom if you have to, it doesn't matter, which is even cooler because now I can be having networking meetings across the country, across the yep. world. Um, Vlad and I don't live anywhere near each other nope. um, as an example. Um, so that would be my one most actionable thing. As far as the more online stuff and, and quizzes in particular, um, I think Jumping right into quizzes is tough if you've got if you've not got the infrastructure set up for that already. Meaning, like you've got to have your email list, like an active campaign, or a, I don't want to name brands. I guess I should do that, but uh, but you got to yeah. have an email list manager at the very least. And again, mm -hmm. most of your listeners are probably into that. 
Um, Cause you want to at least gather the information so that you've got a warm lead or a warm call available to you later on. And you can email, uh, create email campaigns and newsletters to those people afterwards. So the first step here guys for online business, like if you're not collecting emails um, and developing an email list, then, I mean, I never like to say you're not doing things right, but you're not doing things right. If you don't have yeah, no, for sure. That's a hundred percent. Right. So it's, yeah. You yeah. Build that database. Yeah. Um, but then yeah, quizzes, um, you know, checking out some of the uh, options that are out there. Uh, lead quizzes is probably a really uh, common tool that's out there. I'm looking into um, if you really, if you're already really deep into online business, you know, SEO, online marketing and stuff like that, you're probably pretty well set up. Uh, you could check out something like bucket.io, um, which is really advanced. Uh, but that's what like, you know, uh, companies that are really scaling and selling um, like consumables um, uh, on the online market and like selling physical things, uh, they kill it with things like bucket.io um, and a lot of flexibility that you can use with that. So as far as online tools, those would be some of the, the, the big ones. But, uh, but it, it only works if you've got an email uh, list manager and then are willing to spend the effort to creating the campaigns after that. That's awesome. I, I love that. Dr. Jason, you've been a great guest on the show. So now's your chance. Plug it up. What should we be checking out? Where should we be you know, looking at you? And how can we contact you? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, my clinic is Evoke Integrative Medicine. I'm in downtown Vancouver, Canada. Um, I also do uh, coaching as a performance coach. Um, and uh, I have a certificate in organizational coaching. So I like working with people who at least are part of a larger organization um, or are leadership in an organization. Um, so those are sort of the two major areas that, that I work with is performance and productivity from a more medical standpoint and then coaching uh, as well uh, at the organizational level. Uh, EvokeMedicine.com is my clinic's website, but I'll also say to you guys who are listening in the future here, uh, stay tuned because we're about to launch a, a brand, uh, our new brand uh, around Evoke Life. Um, and so that's going to be the new brand we're launching and really getting into you know, lifestyle medicine uh, performance, productivity, resilience. Um, and uh, that's going to be where all the magic's happening. So clothing line, supplement line, coaching, clinics, programs, all of that stuff coming out of there. So um, for those of you who are in a similar spot to me, that's you know where I'm taking my practice to the next level and, and really scaling um, is bringing things to a larger brand and, and placing my clinical practice as just one prong underneath an umbrella uh, of a larger brand. So uh, Evoke Life, stay tuned. It's coming next couple of weeks. Thank you guys. And that was another episode of Vital Doc Talk.